Smile, raid on Stohis District 1. Oh, we got a new arc. Back to Annie. Is this her father? Is Annie the female titan? <laughs> she is blonde. I did say that once in passing. Hmm. I mean, that does make some sense because she wasn't seen at the same time the titan was seen. The reason I initially discarded that theory was because my thinking was that it would have to be someone who was in the Survey Corps in order to be on that mission in the first place. But then again, when I think about it, that's not necessarily the case because she just sort of ran in. And it probably is someone in the Cadets. It's a new issue, it seems. And my theory is the female Titan is the same person who sabotaged Eren's gear during training. So Annie, now that I'm looking at her face, <laughs> I got a lot of comments like, the Titan looks nothing like Mikasa. I just didn't know that there had to be that much of a physical resemblance because Eren... Titan Aaron doesn't really look like Aaron to me. This is me trying to cover myself. Make myself feel better for, for totally getting it wrong. Yeah, I'm really worried about the fallout of this terrible mission. Yeah, see, people are happy about it on some level. It gives them what they want. These people again. Seems like it's growing in popularity. Nice, are we going to get to know some of the military police? It seems so relaxed, this whole thing. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, it's the military police that are the ones that it's such a crazy contrast between the military police and the survey corps because like and he's late this guy just seems like he can't be bothered with his job compare this very informal meeting with light banter to like an Irwin speech you know but about the escort there obviously is some group of people that's doing something <laughs> something's going on behind the scenes I don't know how big it is I'm guessing Annie's a part of it. I'm guessing that's why she slept in, because she just, you know, did that whole Titan thing. But on top of that, the escort makes sense anyway, just because it's not like everyone loves the Survey Corps or Aaron. There's a whole bunch of different interests here. Yeah, busy playing chess and drinking wine. Eating fine cheeses. I knew it was some kind of game. Don't worry, one day you two will graduate into the poker game. Idealists everywhere. This is kind of a relief to me. I mean, it's always a relief when I find out things are more nuanced than they at first appear. So the MPs are, are people. <laughs> there are people just like everyone else. Before I was talking about the idea about how like, there are many ways you can give back, right? It doesn't always have to be the most dangerous thing. Like I think some people in the show would believe. The military police conceivably could play a very important role. Marlowe seems to be one of the people who joined not out of just selfishness or for his own personal safety. It seems like he actually has a connection to it. My feeling about this is that this is setting them up because there's sort of this ragtag crew, right? They're kind of nobodies. Most of them are upfront about the fact that they're just doing this for relative ease and comfort. But here they are about to be placed into this big position where things could go down. And if my new theory is correct that Annie is involved as the female Titan or something like that, this is going to make them very important. And so that'll be interesting to see how they handle that when things actually hit the fan. I can see this being a crew that actually ends up being interesting. There's no Erwin here, but you know, we can make do. In some ways, it's kind of the flip side of the Survey Corps, right? Because the Survey Corps is so Irwin and Levi heavy, top down, right? This is like just some lost kids without any of that like inspirational structure. Yeah, you laugh now. At least the guy has dreams. Yeah. I'm on his side. How so? It does. But... I'm still waiting for the critique. What's her deal? I mean, it's true the talk is cheap. And a risk for idealists is that they sometimes don't understand the complexities of the situation. Everybody wants to change the world, right? And you can always see the flaws in society. It's 
obvious to everybody. What's less obvious is why those flaws exist and sometimes there's a good reason. And the thinking I see often is like, this thing has problems, let's knock it all down and build something new in our own utopian vision. But it actually doesn't work that way. Everything that exists was built through a long and gradual process. And a lot of the time, the flaws in that exist as a result of things that keep other bigger problems away. That being said, it would be wrong, I think, to say that just because things are the way they are, that's how they should be. But I think that's just the challenge of people like Marlo or Aaron, if you do things correctly, how do you go about changing the things that you don't like or the mistakes you can see while also preserving the things that actually are really important without destroying them and making things much worse? They're so soft. They're setting them up. They're soft, but then things are going to go wrong. Yeah, very subtle, this bag of money. Hold it up to the camera so we can all see. Here we go, Marlo in action. And he's taking notice. <laughs> Man, that's hard. What you gonna do, Marlo? Oh, damn. It keeps going. There you go. Inspiring some action. Get him, Annie. Thank you, Annie. <laughs> Our idiot. <laughs> Using her sweetness as a skill. But he kept the money though, so at least there's that. At least he got paid. Yeah, now he's on Annie's radar. <laughs> but this is not the way. I mean, these are just two, like, random grunts. You're not going to change anything like this. Yes. <laughs> He would have. He would have stabbed them and called them filthy pigs. I feel like he's making a common mistake that is very relatable to me. It's like, if you're someone who feels really passionately about something, about change, for example, right? There's a lot of things happening at once. Like, one is the pure idea of what you can see and the changes you want to make. But another is your own internal emotional battle. And I think there's, like, this feeling you get when you constantly wonder, are you strong enough to do it? Like, am I capable? And you wrestle with yourself. And the issue with that, if you have that kind of like lingering doubt, is it can push you to try to prove yourself in situations that really have no positive outcome. These two soldiers, that's not, this is not it. This is not the battle. You shoot these guys and so, their whole infrastructure is still there. These guys are just working for someone else probably. It's like Obi-Wan says, you know, discretion is the better part of valor. Marlo has really good intentions, but I feel like he has to remove himself a little bit, be a little bit less emotional about it. He could actually do great things over a long time period if he actually does achieve his dreams and rises in the ranks. Although this is Attack on Titan and he probably won't live that long. Annie, huh? Armin? What's he doing there? Armin knows everything. Wow. This is huge for Armin. This is a huge wager as far as wagers go. Same. Same. What's the deal with the ring? I'm blown away by this Armin initiative. That's crazy. So it looks like Annie's actually really idealistic. I think she was initially framed as being someone who's uncaring, but that's clearly not the case. She's just caring in her own way. She cares about different things or she's not really open about what exactly she cares about. Is she a good person? I don't know. I'm kind of with Armin that I don't like that that way of thinking about it. To think of yourself as a good person, I think, sets you up for failure. Because then it's a title you have to defend. Whereas really, the concept is not as important as, like, just what you do. And that's something that takes shape with every given moment. It's not something you just are. Better to aim at repeated good action than to think of yourself statically as a good person. Or a bad person, for that matter. It already happened. Oh no, Jean's the fall guy? So, so, 
Wait, what? I'm confused. For a second, I thought I missed an episode because my first thought when he said that was that he's referring to any like spinning that dude. But I guess he's talking about the training camp. Although, is that a double meaning? Feels like a time jump happened because there was so much behind the scenes planning that must have taken place between this whole crew. They just sort of like materialized here with this plan. Well, I mean, she's already done her part, right? They don't really need her help beyond here. Why doesn't she want to go underground? What is going on? Is this a trap? Whoa, so they... So Armin... Had a feeling. Wait, wait, wait. So this whole thing was not Armin's initiative. That actually makes sense because I was thinking like this is too much for Armin to do to actually bust Aaron out. This is an operation. This is a Survey Corps operation. They're trying to flush Annie out. He's about to get the signal. It's crazy. It's been Annie. Annie all along. That was before the female Titan. Yeah. Why? Why are you doing all this? Because she's a good person. That's true, her, her sparing Armin led to this, it seems. Because Armin figured her out. Love this sinister music. No, no, no. And he has no sense of humor. Oh, she won't go down there because that means she can't transform. Mikasa's ready to go. Yeah, she has a grudge. Yeah, but she can transform. But that would just expose her whole thing. It's weird seeing Annie laugh. It's very disorienting. That's kind of sweet. Oh no. Here we go. Oh, that's the trigger. That's what the ring is for. But this is it though, right? Now, now they know. Damn, even the transforming creates an explosion. Well, that's it. Female Titan's out in the open now. So much happened in that episode. I'm amazed by the speed of that. While watching that, I got the feeling that I had missed an episode or something like that. Because that was really, really quick resolution to who is the female Titan. But I think the fact that it's a plot to capture her sort of clears that up. Because it seemed like a big jump to me that Armin would have, like, planned this whole thing to go against the military and kidnap Eren. It makes a lot more sense for him that this was not, like, a rogue action. That it was actually a plan. And that's such a huge shock. Not that it's Annie. I mean, it makes a lot of sense in hindsight. <laughs> Can't believe I missed that. But the beginning of this episode felt like it was setting up Annie and the military police and that whole crew with Marlo and everything. I mean, I'm sure they're still gonna be a part of it, but this definitely shakes things up. I imagine this would actually help Eren, just because it's like Pixis was saying, you know, a common enemy. Eren looking pretty good if there's this threat of this Titan right in the walls. Who else is gonna help out? So now we know it's Annie, and there was that little flashback to her father, but what led her here, and what is her actual goal, and how much does she know? She mentioned something about helping the little people who get washed away in the tide, but I'm not exactly sure what she means. So so I'm looking forward to getting more on Annie and seeing exactly where she lies mentally and morally. But yeah, I love the setup. I love that tunnel twist. That was really cool. It makes Armin look really cool and also the core that they ended up orchestrating this. It's a pretty good plan. And in hindsight, Armin's like giving her all these excuses, right? Like, why here? Why this? And also it makes Jean safe, probably. Totally flipped my expectations upside down. So yeah, that's the end of episode 23. I'll see you guys next time when Annie's on the loose, I guess.